This wasn't the right size. I think we were the right size, and I, I loved our original plans. Um, but this is the survival mode that was necessary, and what we did accomplish. Um, the one thing is we've stabilized our finances so that we won't run out of money as we build the metaverse. Um, and uh, and you know this has implications for everything. Um, I'm going to talk about that and how it affects uh, all of our ecosystem efforts. Um, but one of the principles we decided on early on was about 10 weeks ago when we realized we were running into a financial problem that we had to solve quickly, um, is that we wouldn't spread the pain around equally. Rather, we went through and identified all the parts of our business and exactly what we absolutely needed in order to accomplish our mission. Um, and it, so it affected different parts of the company in rather different ways. Um, the Unreal Engine engineering team um, was only impacted with the 3% layoff. Um, many of the business, sales, and marketing teams uh, suffered more than 30% layoffs. Um, and so this is going to have implications for everything we do. And it's going to result in a degradation of quality of some of our work. And I'm sorry for that. Um, but right now, everybody in the company um, is uh, working to figure out how we're going to rebalance our priorities and to, um, you know, retask the teams in new ways in order to uh, serve all of your needs. Um, and we'll get through that. Um, but you know, this, this effort and going through these pains really caused us to look at every part of our business and ask very hard questions of ourselves. But one of the things we this really was reinforced was that we truly believe in our strategy here. That Epic, as we've been doing for a very long time now, it's one of only been two things. Um, we're building technology for all of the creators in the world. Um, and we're building our own entertainment experiences on top of that. Um, and the business is built around the synergy between the two. Um, and you know, one, of the, one of the things we came out of this realizing is core to our business is that we serve all of the world's real-time 3D creation needs. Um, the wonderful thing about the Unreal Editor and the Unreal Engine toolset is that um, you know, it provides 90% of what everybody needs for real-time 3D in every industry. Um, and then different industries need different things. Game developers need one set of things. Filmmakers doing virtual production need another. Um, and uh, architects need some. And you know, automotive makers need fancy material systems and so on and so on. And so, we built up a structure in which we have a lot of different um, small teams serving the needs of every industry. Um, and the, the engineering teams uh, doing this work are largely not impacted by the layoffs. Um, and so the engineering work continues, and the sales uh, work and support work and so on continues, but at a smaller scale. Um, and we're committed to serving all of the different parts of uh, the Unreal Engine ecosystem. And truly, uh, We've gone through this realizing that the magic in what we do is in serving everybody. And the, the real core strategy of our business, which is to not just be a general electric style company with a bunch of divisions serving a bunch of different industries, but to connect everybody together into real time 3D and something resembling the open metaverse um, is our goal. And the, the, the massive Fortnite crossovers we, we've done building film and television content, you know, partnership with Disney and Marvel and others of the Fortnite and musician content by bringing concerts into Fortnite and all of these different pieces truly rely on us providing the tool set to connect all of these different industries together. And that's what we're going to do. And we'll continue uh, through good times and bad uh, times of doing it. Um, and, you know, we, we realized that one of the things, one of the principles we, we came through realizing is like we have to it's hard for us, but it's also hard for you. A lot of uh, companies in the industry are selling for it similarly, or in some cases worse uh, than we are. And uh, we can't make our problems our problems, and we won't. Um, and, you know, so, under, engine royalties have been discussed <laughs> recently in the industry. Um, you know, we've, and let me tell you, uh, since we introduced the 5% revenue sharing model um, in 2014, um, the only conversations we've ever had about the royalty are, can we lower it? Um, and we've had those discussions a number of times, including recently, and um, the recent discussion concluded, like, no, we really need money. Like, <laughs> we need the money. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's not necessarily the case forever. Uh, you know, a funny stat that one of our investors pointed out years ago was that the engine business uh, 
makes about 0.04% of industry revenue. Uh, because, you know, Moody is really popular, and there are other engines, and internal engines, and most of them are uh, licensed without, um, you know, revenue sharing, including you can call our, our sales force and then negotiate a royalty fee on our new origins uh, still. Um, uh, you know, it, if we were able to scale and succeed at a larger scale, I do hope that we can lower that in the future. And that, you know, we, we see ourselves as serving our customers and not becoming an ecosystem overboard as uh, we are want to complain about uh, from time to time. Uh, in, in terms of, you know, our, our game developer business model we think is really sound. It's a business model designed so that we succeed when you succeed. Um, and most teams, you know, default at paying any royalty at all. But, you know, ultimately, I think everybody comes to look at it as like we're all professional developers here. Um, and the Unreal Engine team, the, if you're using Unreal Engine, it's kind of an extension of your team. And if you weren't paying us uh, money for the engine, you'd have to hire really awesome people to build your own, and you'd be paying them too. Uh, and, you know, these would have costs for your business. So, you know, we think our structure for game developers is really sound. Uh, there has been a quirk of our engine business uh, for a while uh, that we're going to patch next year, and that's that um, we have an engine that's completely free for anybody to use, uh, but if you're never shipping a product that's royalty bearing, um, then you never pay any money at all. Um, and uh, yeah, this doesn't affect game developers, but one of the things we're going to change next year is for industries other than game development, um, you know, such as the automotive industry and so on, um, we're going to move to a seat-based uh, enterprise software licensing model for our real engine. Um, and we don't have terms to announce yet, but this is just, I wanted to get this out in front of everybody uh, for transparency. We're going to move to a model like that. It's not going to be unusually expensive uh, or unusually inexpensive, but if you're going to be building a game, uh, product outside the game industry and not um, paying a royalty on it, then yeah, it will be a licensable piece of software like soft, you know, like Maya or Photoshop or whatever. Um, and that would just be a change that uh, tries to bring our engine uh, revenue uh, back and associated with the teams that are doing work in the industries. You know, a funny thing about uh, being funded uh, so heavily by Fortnite over the past six years is we've kind of let different parts of our business get disconnected from their revenue streams. Yeah, we have big teams serving different industry verticals, building this and that set of features uh, for custom clients um, without revenue to support it. Um, and that's been fine because we've seen adoption uh, grow massively. But one of, the, one of the rigors that we need to do as we become a lower margin company and kind of have to cope with this is reassociating revenue streams with the things we're doing. And uh, you know, this will absolutely not affect game developers. I think um, free and uh, pay upon success is the best deal uh, we can offer. And if you don't like it, then you know, call up the sales force and negotiate uh, a zero LP deal and pay some money up front, and that works too. Um, we're also dedicated to continuing all of these other uh, services that we provide. You know, we have the Epic Game Store. Uh, we think the Epic Game Store is the cure to the disease that's impacting a lot of the industry right now, where the mobile platforms have become overlords and are you know, extracting vastly higher payment processing fees than any same payment processor on Earth. And, you know, we're fighting that. And we see one day uh, over the coming years, uh, perhaps at different times in different territories, we will be able to open up uh, these platforms and bring the Epic Games Store to iOS and to Android and to continue offering uh, you know, a 12% uh, fee store. Um, and serving customers at a much, much larger scale than we served before. And Epic Online, online Services, it's this have uh, online services we built for Fortnite, um, and it now have opened up to all developers. If you want to escape from you know, Steam or escape from the various uh, single platform ecosystems and connect all of your players together as we did, it's a great solution for that, and we'll continue it, and we'll continue these investments. Um, and so, what, you know, this is really Epic's process of reconciling our business model with the, real the reality that eventually comes to exist for all companies. Uh, we escaped it for a while with Fortnite, and, uh, and now we're getting back to uh, having reached the scale of a, a now a 4,000 some person company um, through a really painful downsizing, and uh, we're, we're desperately uh, now going to be operating in a different way to make sure that we don't get back into that kind of condition. Um, and to our these signs, good and bad, uh, we'll support you, and we'll continue everything we're doing. We're grateful for your business. And, uh, but anyway, Underworld Fest isn't about um, 
you know, this, it's about celebrating the accomplishments of everybody who's voting amazing stuff in primary Wellington. So let's get on with the show. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs>